and uh, welcome to this joint webinar between Esquire Group and Beacon Financial Education on what can Americans abroad invest in. As many of you attending probably know, it's getting more and more difficult for Americans abroad uh, to not only get investment accounts, but also uh, find investments that are not going to be tax disadvantageous. Uh, and today we're going to be speaking to Robert Rigby Hall, the president of Beacon Global Group, and also David Bellingham, the managing director of Europe for Beacon Global Group. Uh, but before we jump into the presentation, uh, as always, a little disclaimer that this presentation was prepared for educational purposes only. This presentation is not legal, tax, or investment advice, nor is it to be construed as such. Each individual circumstances are different. You should seek legal tax and or investment advice to address any specific questions you may have. My name is Jimmy Sexton. I'm the president of Esquire Group. Uh, we're an international tax advisory firm with offices in Austria, Germany, the US and the UAE. I specialize in strategic consulting uh, and international taxation for US citizens with foreign income and assets, expatriation, family offices, succession planning, structures for high net worth individuals and corporate structures for small and mid-sized enterprises. I have a uh, bachelor's in business administration with an emphasis in finance, a JD, an LLM in international taxation. I'm fluent in English and German. And if anybody really is interested to know more about me, the link to my bio uh, is below. Uh, Robert, I will turn it over to you to introduce yourself. And uh, first and foremost, thank you for joining us today for this webinar. Okay, Jimmy, thanks very much indeed. I appreciate it. Um, so my name is Robert Rigby Hall. Um, as Jimmy said, I'm the president of uh, Beacon Global Group and also the chief officer of Universal Access Bonds. And you're going to hear a little bit more about uh, UABs um, in just a moment. Uh, as Beacon, we have offices in the UK and the Netherlands and uh, the US. Um, despite the English and all a US citizen, um, I've lived in the US for the last 18 years. Um, and therefore, as a dual British and US national, have uh, lived through many of the challenges that we'll touch on. I've lived and worked um, in the UK, the US, um, Asia, and now in Europe. I split my time about 70% of the time in Europe, in, based out of the Netherlands, and the rest of the time in Austin, Texas. Uh, and my background is uh, business studies and finance. Um, uh, then a short stint at a Harvard Executive Development Program, uh, and then uh, in um, corporate governance, corporate board governance. Um, and my bio uh, is also on the uh, is on the Beacon Global Group. Uh, Back to you, Jimmy. Hey, thank you, uh, David. I will uh, let you uh, introduce yourself. Uh, and again, thank you for uh, for joining us in today's webinar. Thanks, Jimmy, and it's good to be speaking with you again at, at one of the uh, Esquire Group's uh, webinars. Uh, my name is David Bellingham. I'm MD for Europe for the Beacon Global Group and have been involved with them for a, a number of years now. I'm also through that uh, in my capacity of Director of Leading Mile Consulting, where I'm delivering financial services, uh, advice, strategic uh, and support to individuals and businesses uh, in this region. I am based in The Hague in the Netherlands, and I have lived in and, and worked in six countries and three continents across financial services for uh, quite a while, a number of years. Uh, my background is a Bachelor of Applied Science at MBA and submitting my uh, PhD at the moment, as well as diploma and graduate diplomas in financial planning and certified financial planning uh, with more information to be found at my bio. And I look forward to speaking with you this evening. Well, I feel a little bit uh, undereducated uh, after seeing that, uh, the, the educational background there, David. But uh, anyway, I'm going to uh, turn it over uh, to Robert now, who will lead you through the first part of this presentation. Great. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, Beacon Financial Education and the, the background. So um, maybe a quick bit on Beacon Financial Education. Um, it's been around for um, a little over 20 years um, in the US. Uh, we're a financial advisory business in the US. And in Europe, uh, we, we came to about three years ago with a view that we needed to really help 
uh, Americans live because it was such a difficult market and such so much so little advice available. Um, and as Americans, we found that ourselves. Um, I banked with ABN AMRO and they wrote to me about five years ago and said, no, we need you to liquidate all of your assets. We'll only hold cash. So we realized there was such a need for support for Americans um, living outside the US. And one of the ways uh, that our business has grown in the US has been through financial education. Um, and we felt that was an important platform to build in Europe. Um, and so we spent the last three years providing free financial education. Uh, we run um, all over Europe, really not just for Americans, for any, any expat particularly, um, but, but Americans especially, um, providing information to individuals so that they've got everything they need for kind of financial control, stability, and the simplicity of being able to plan for the future. Um, all about making well-informed financial decisions. Through financial education, we also, and we provide newsletters, and you can have the opportunity to sign up for those if you're interested in regular communications. But most importantly, we provide access to a global network of uh, financial advisors um, all over the world. Those are independent regulated advisors. Um, they work locally, they're licensed locally, they have local knowledge, whether it's UK, Germany, France, Singapore, um, and they do quality work focusing specifically on, on Americans. So one of the questions that we quite often get asked is, so who is a US connected person or what is a US connected person? So the easy one is if you're holding a US passport, it's a straightforward one. Um, you either naturalized or you were born in the US and you've got a blue US passport. But then there's people who are also citizens who were born outside the US, but may have one US parent, US citizen parent. Whether they've ever chosen to get a US passport or not is irrelevant. They should be, they are US citizens and they should be paying US taxes from day one. Then there's all those people who are green card holders or who've had visas and worked in the US. And then there are those who are tax resident in the US. Um, and there's some tests for what requirements there are for tax residency. But most important is to make sure that you understand whether or not you are a US citizen or a US connected person. And it's the US connected person part that is the most difficult at times for people to, uh, to comprehend. Um, and, and, and one thing, just to interject real quick, that you know we see a lot in uh, in, in our business that I think is important to note is, you know, a, a lot of people, as you said, it doesn't matter if you have the passport or not. Uh, if you were born to an American parent that that meets the criteria for for passing uh, citizenship onto their to their children, um, then you would be a U.S. person. A lot of people think that oh well, I might be a U.S. person, but even though I don't have a social security number. Uh, you know, I don't have to do uh, taxes, and then you know that's not the case. Uh, it's 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 based on on the citizenship. The the social security number really has has nothing to do with it. I think that that's an important point as well. Absolutely, absolutely, that's great. Um, okay, Jimmy, let's move on to the next slide. Yep. Perfect. Um, why is this so important? Well, it, it's really important for for a number of reasons, but one of them is the impact of tax as a US citizen. As a US citizen or US connected person, as I'm sure you're aware, you are subject to worldwide income tax. Um, and we can debate whether we agree or disagree with, with that, but that's the reality, worldwide income tax. Now, um, the IRS you know, treats many things in an interesting way, but one of the things it treats uh, in a particular way is foreign investments in collectives. So you're a US citizen, you invest in the equivalent of a mutual fund in Europe. The IRS mutual fund in Europe and goes, yeah, I don't really understand what that is. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's what they call a PFIC, a passive foreign investment company. And they look at that and they go, so we will not allow tax, we will not allow capital gains for, tax, for that. We'll only allow uh, income tax um, for any gains on that account. So the implications of that are, are pretty onerous. Um, and the slide you're looking at just um, makes a, a simple example. If you look in that column PFIC, PFIC, then a $100,000 investment. And if we assumed it was invested in an S&P-based fund equivalent, and 
for a five year period, you were a US citizen living abroad, married, filing jointly 200,000 of income, then the gain on that investment would have been a little under 76,000, so 75,684. The tax you owed, because you would not be allowed any capital gains relief, it would be ordinary income tax, would be 28,000, which means your gain would be about $47,500. Now, what you can do with certain funds is what's called a qualified election fund, a QEF election. And if you do that, then you're allowed, allowed the capital gains relief. And if you do that, then the tax owed would be more than half of what was the PFIX scenario, meaning your net gain would be 64000 so you're talking about a saving by paying correct tax. There's no tax avoidance here, no additional tax deferral. This is just correctly taxing something. The correct tax would mean you would be saving yourself on that 100,000 invested five ago, $16,738. So pretty significant tax saving just by making sure you do the right QEF election on the right and it's important to bear that in mind because David's going to talk about something called the universal access bond later, which will allow you to do the QEF election. And, okay. and this is this is I think the PFIX are, are really, you know, I, I think are a really big problem as you mentioned uh, in in Europe because you know investing in in, in funds is a very typical uh, method of saving for for Europeans and something that's offered. Uh, you know, regularly by by people's bankers as as a mechanism for saving, for for saving, saying you know it's tax advantaged and all this other stuff, which it is by European standards. But as a U.S. connected person, uh, it certainly is more more difficult. Absolutely. So so whatever happens, if if a Squire Group is uh, does your tax uh, tax returns, then they'll help you know that you have PFIX. If they're not, then make sure you ask your accountants and your tax advisors if you have PFIX, um, or send the uh, the version of your latest return to Jimmy and his team to help you understand if you have PFIX, because there's tax savings, significant tax savings to be achieved there. Yeah. So what are your investment options? Um, well, there's, there's a very limited number for you, for us uh, as Americans living outside the U. Keep it in cash. Um, and we've all seen the state of that um, in the, with very low interest rates. Um, and in fact, if you're in the Netherlands, you also have a wealth tax, which means obviously that you uh, end up paying money to give to, to leave your money in the bank, which uh, I always find a slightly strange situation. So there's keeping it in cash. There's invested in, investing in US listed ETFs. Um, those a number of those do provide non-US reporting. Uh, so reporting in the UK, for example. So that's another option. And then if there's significant money that you have, then there are a couple of other options. One is what are called segregated portfolios. Uh, where you give uh, you give your investment dollars to somebody to manage on your behalf. They invest them in a variety of uh, of separate portfolios for you, all managed by them. Um, you're probably talking about needing to have three quarters of a million uh, a million dollars and up to be able to go into a segregated portfolio. Um, and then there's also the option of trusts and offshore structures. Um, trusts and offshore structures have, you know, some, we always have some concerns about wanting to make sure done in the correct jurisdictions and done uh, effectively with the right lawyers uh, and the right tax advisors to make sure they're effective. Uh, but trusts and offshore structures are viable as well. Again, that's uh, requiring significant funds, though. So that's not for uh, most of us um, who want to invest uh, a few hundred thousand. So those are the current sort of investment options that are available. Um, and you've now got growing issues associated with currency diversification. And if you're a US connected person and you've actually told, you've got a brokerage account in the US and you've told them that you have a, uh, a, a non-US address, increasingly we're now seeing those brokerage uh, services writing to people to say, you know what, you've got an overseas address we don't really want to have anything outside the US, so can you please close that account down, meaning you've got virtually nowhere to go to invest. So people are looking for some, some pretty sophisticated 
um, investment tools. Um, most of the time, the solutions that we see our clients wanting are, first of all, things that they could buy and sell or, or uh, give to family members reasonably easy, so transferability. That there is effective reporting um, across multiple jurisdictions, but most importantly, reporting from a tax perspective, so they don't have to worry about things like the PFIC reporting. That the investments are confidential and liquid. Um, with most people buying something like a mutual fund, they're typically looking at a, a monthly um, liquidation. Um, sometimes they're wanting less than that. Sometimes they're happy with more, but typically something of at least a minimal, uh, a minimum rather, of uh, monthly liquidity. So those are the things we see in the market and things that you should be aware of when you come to think about investing. And I'm now going to hand over to David, who's going to talk about some of the other options that are available and the, uh, and the new things that are coming to the marketplace. David. Thanks, Robert, and I'll continue from there. For those of you who uh, attend these uh, webinars regularly, you may recall when I spoke a few months ago about uh, there may be potential new solutions coming to the market. Well, I'm pleased to say now that this is one of those that I was uh, referring to last time. Uh, if I take a step back for a second, though, Robert just talked about the limited investment options and the need for sophisticated solutions meeting international people's needs of transferability and appropriate reporting, confidentiality in investing and liquidity. Uh, they're all very important. And one thing I've seen particularly in the last 15 years living in, in various countries around the world and working with internationals and expats from various places is that change is inevitable and it's often not in the way you expect and therefore issues like liquidity are important. Uh, there are some solutions that may meet some of your needs. However, if you're locked up for a multi-year period, it doesn't really uh, resolve that problem should your circumstances change. So it's, it's important to have a meeting of all those needs. A compliance solution coming to market now is the Universal Access Bond or UAB. It is a, a PFIC as investments are, however, it does have the QEF election, uh, which means it becomes compliant in that US uh, tax purposes and allows you then to separate the capital gains and the income in your investment and thereby pay a whole lot less tax. Uh, and within their structure whilst maintaining the flexibility of liquidity and so forth. The way that it's done is by relying on experts, the leaders in, in, in their fields. When we're looking at building a portfolio, um, if everyone wants to, to, to build an investment, you look to the experts. And in this case, we're looking to Union Bank Air, Privé and Goodbody. And as you can see there, UBP is one of Switzerland's uh, leading private banks. Uh, it's got a, a great capital adequacy, it's got a great reputation uh, and, and a very strong foundation. Good Body is just about the oldest um, stockbroker in Ireland. It in fact owns 26% of the Irish Stock Exchange and is a leader in portfolio, de, portfolio construction. So these organisations help to build portfolios because when someone wants to make an investment, the first question is, where do I put my money? We'll turn to these people to create the best solutions for you, for your needs, for your goals, for your risk profile. And a number of those have been set uh, in that format. If we look at the, uh, the next slide, uh, it will show us that what we do is, or what they do then, is put together what we would call a fund of fund. So that is looking at the leading fund managers in a market for a risk profile, putting together a portfolio combining some of those according to risk profile, whether you're conservative, whether you're balanced, whether you're adventurous, and that depends on your outlook, uh, your ability to sleep at night with a certain investment uh, being uh, placed, and also your needs and your goals, what you need to achieve in the time period in which you need to achieve that. So the right mix of those will create the right portfolio for you to, to help you to get there. And these structures uh, are within the UAB. So these can be invested in through regular investment vehicles that you may be familiar with living uh, in Europe, for example. They are in multi-currency. If you are looking to invest in 
uh, outside of the US while living in Europe, for example, they can be done in USD or they can be done in Euro or GBP, perhaps to match your goals or your income source uh, at, at quite an efficient and low cost. They are compliant because they are registered and regulated by the, the Irish regulator and sit on the Irish Stock Exchange in a format that means you're investing into the bond and the bond is investing into the underlying funds. So you're getting that fund without having that PFIC uh, her hassle uh, in, in a compliant QEF model. It is something that hasn't really been introduced into the market before and certainly in early discussions with professionals across the region, they're quite excited to have something that will meet their US clients' needs in general. So the real objectives when uh, when looking at UAB, the objectives of UAB are really the benefits of going into it. And they use the, the acronym CLEAR, uh, standing for compliant, because obviously we start with compliance. Everything starts and ends with compliance. It has to be FACA compliant, which it is. Liquidity, as I mentioned, is very important. Your needs and circumstances will inevitably change. So you need to be able to move and adapt as markets and circumstances change there. And you can do that on a monthly basis. It has to be established. These are established and well-proven organizations that are managing your money and making these investments and controlling that. So you are not going into anything that's not established, has been around for a long time. It's accessible, that is, it's available to any investor, you don't need to be a private banking level client. You don't need to have a million US uh, dollars to invest into this. You can get into the lower range. And there is very importantly, quite simple and straightforward reporting to uh, enable you or your accountant to do your tax returns and file your returns back to the US yearly. So it is a, a very good structure uh, that has, I think, long been needed in the market to assist and help Americans. One thing that we I need to say, whether we're talking, whether you're a US connected person or any investor, not a, a one single investment will never meet the needs of everyone. Uh, there is a range here. However, the, the, the advice I give you is for you to get advice. Uh, so in looking at this, if you think that is interesting or you want to find out more, go to the place where you'd normally go to get your advice, whether it's Esquire Group through Jimmy or through your financial advisor or through your bank or the channel that you would go through. Go and ask them about it and talk to them because you, have, you must make sure that it is appropriate for your circumstances specifically. And, and, uh, absolutely. I mean, getting getting the right advice is, is, is always, um, you know, the, 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 the key to any successful and bi business uh, transaction or investment. Um, I do have a quick question though. So you mentioned that this is uh, this product is, is listed on the Irish Stock Exchange. Did I understand that uh, correctly? That's correct, yes. So they're listed as a bond on the Stock Exchange, hence okay. their name. Uh, and so you are buying so, into that bond, which invests into these funds, creating this fund of fund portfolio for you. Uh, understood. So, so, so really, uh, if, if my understanding is correct, then then, then uh, people that invest in this not only have um, the option of making a QEF election, uh, but they would also have the option of potentially making the uh, mark to market election um, for for the PFIC, uh, and they could weigh which one was going to provide them the, the best benefit um, in, in terms of uh, U.S. taxation. Sure, well, that's uh, good tax advice straight away. <laughs> well. Well, well, great. Uh, I think that that uh, that takes us uh, to to the end of uh, end of our presentation. And uh, Robert and David, thank you so much for joining us for this webinar.